in spite of a booming economy or perhaps because of it, more and more of us are living from paycheck to paycheck in danger of not being able to cover the basic costs of food and shelter. How big a problem is homelessness? What are the factors causing it? Who's responsible for addressing it? We're joined by Dr. Mark Spooner, a professor of education at the University of Regina. Thanks for coming in. Thanks. Thanks for having me on your show. I'm going to start with something that is uh, all too obvious. You do not present as a professor. <laughs> and I think you're referring to my beard and hair and perhaps some yep. of my clothes. Well, I'm a homelessness researcher, so uh, you got to factor some of that in. Um, you, you know, if you dressed up with a shirt and tie and a thousand-dollar suit, uh, the people you're speaking with and trying to work with might not be able to relate to you and might not trust you. So I find that this look actually helps people uh, relate to me better, and I actually feel quite comfortable this way. Who's going homeless? Well, that's the ironic part about a boom is that in periods of great wealth creation in provinces, the gap between rich and poor actually widens. So that's what's going on here. You have a province that's attracting lots of workers from across Canada and uh, around the world. Um, so you have an influx of people. That, um, you also have not enough housing stock and not enough rental housing in particular, r rental units to, to handle the increase in people. So who's getting pushed into the street? Is it mostly lower class or? Well, well that's the thing. It's now the working poor, uh, new Canadians, people who have traditionally been the most marginalized, of course. They're the first to get pushed out. Uh, as rental costs go up, they can just no longer afford it. Some people who come to the city for work already have good paying jobs, and they're the ones who are able to afford the, the rising rents. But that has a trickle down effect where the most marginalized get pushed out first. And that leads, you know, now we have working people, people who are working two, three jobs still can't afford to uh, make rental payments. In terms of the levels of government, who has responsibility for housing? Well, housing is a, a unique thing where it, it falls between or among the three levels of government. So the municipal, provincial, and federal government all have a role to play in housing, which uh, leads to a, a kind of passing of the buck. So if you talk to the municipality, they'll say, well, we can't do anything about this. This is a provincial matter, and the provincial, ma provincial government will typically say that the federal government isn't putting the dollars in to dealing with the issues. So uh, housing and homelessness has actually cuts across all three levels of government, and they all have a role to play. What, what would be the role, say, of the feds first? Sure. Well, the feds, I think, uh, in the past when we haven't had as much of a homelessness issue in Canada, it's because the feds had a national affordable housing strategy. So they actually took the lead. And they also had uh, good programs. For instance, the, uh, the MERBS program was a very popular one, the multiple unit residen residential buildings. That, that they had great tax incentives um, for people who wanted to develop these kind of multiple unit rental units, uh, basically. So those incentives aren't there at the federal level anymore? No. What about the provincial level? Well, at the provincial level, um, especially when a province can foresee that it's going through a boom time, they can increase the uh, amount of stock they have in terms of affordable housing. Uh, and, and right now what's happened is we haven't had any new affordable housing construction in, this, in Saskatchewan for quite some time. Um, there are uh, massive waiting lists, 400 people in Regina, another uh, across the province probably a thousand or more are on waiting lists for affordable housing, and there's no new stock. I, I will give the government the due. There, there, there is sod turnings and announcements of uh, generally smaller units in, in different places with different kinds of needs, seniors, uh, Métis, First Nations, etc. But you're saying that's not enough? No. I mean, those have been quite small, a drop in the bucket in terms of what's required. And they're also, most of them, geared to a sort of public-private uh, partnership of one type or another. So they mostly rely on the market forces again rather than the government just taking the lead and saying we're not going to tolerate this, we're not going to tolerate homelessness in a province as rich as ours. In the cities, what can be done? What, what can municipalities do? Well, I think the first thing a municipality ought to do is admit that there's an issue. And I think we've seen across the province where municipalities shy away from talking about homelessness or refer the matter to a provincial government. And I think that there's a lot uh, municipalities can do. One, uh, they can allow lands 
that are uh, vacant properties to get built on. And, and the city has been doing that in cities across Saskatchewan have been doing that type of thing. But another thing they could be doing is um, facilitating the building of sort of granny flats, that kind of one unit sort of building. So conversions of, of garages, garages or basements. basements. Yeah, yeah e exactly. Th those are um, very effective. They're um, usually cost effective for the renter and the landlords who typically get into that kind of uh, construction or that kind of business are uh, small-time landlords. They're not, it, so it helps them make their own, uh, you know, their own mortgage payments. Mark, I think typically people look at the situation in, in, in major centers now and they say, well, look at the, the boom, look at the suburbs are being built and I don't see anybody on the streets yet. Where are the homeless going? Well, the homeless are around, and if you look around, you'll see them. They're in our parks. Uh, they're definitely in overcrowded housing situations. So what typically happens in a, in a province like Saskatchewan where we have harsh winters, um, you get over, overcrowding house, overcrowded housing. So you get maybe four families living in a two-bedroom house. You get also people living in unsanitary conditions, unsafe conditions, uh, people living any nook and cranny sort of place they can find. Mark, thanks for this. Well, thank you. Thanks for addressing this important issue. Dr. Mark Spooner of the University of Regina. In the coming days, we'll talk with the shelter worker in Prince Albert about the mushrooming demand for housing in that city, a representative of Queen City Housing in Regina about the issues tenants are facing, and find out about the conversion of rental units to condos in Saskatoon.